Your forecast first. Sponsored by Matax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Well, sunshine today, but actually we have mixed in some cloud cover. Take a look here and you can see some clouds showing up in Champaign. Just a little bit warmer today as well. We're again, starting to see some of those clouds on the increase, but still, it warmed us up uh, just fine with that sunshine into the upper 80s across the area. It's it even warmer the next few days as we start to touch, I think, the 90 degree mark. That's Neal Street. That's our evening pointer that shows warm temperatures. Not going to be as cool as it has been. Readings in the low 70s at 11 o'clock. Okay. Hot, humidity, and thunderstorms. We'll talk about it all coming up. WCA 3 News starts right now. Now on WCIA 3 News. The plans are out for the fall semester at the U of I. So, will students be headed back to class? He's got a motto, don't ever kick to the black kid. It's just one of the racist things people are telling us this coach has said. What they say, he's now having trouble fielding a team. Some of those men and women uh, did not come back home after defending our freedom. There's a memorial dedicated to them, how someone took that freedom and walked off with the flags. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6. They're covering for him at this point. But that's not how some see it. A Georgetown Ridge Farm football coach is coming under fire on Facebook. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Roscoe. A former coach posted about him calling him out for being racist towards students. Now, former students are also coming forward saying the same thing. WCI3's Courtney Bunting has the story. People in Georgetown are calling out a coach and assistant principal for racism. A former high school football coach posted on Facebook describing things current coach Josh Kavanaugh would do to black students, like calling them the N-word. Kavanaugh is also the assistant principal at the junior high school. These accusations aren't news for former player Trent Reed. Reed and his brother played for Georgetown, but only his brother was coached by Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh would call his backfield the, the night train when he had black kids back there. So he would say the, the white kids are blocking for the night train. He addressed my mother as the angry black woman in town. He's got a motto, don't ever kick to the black kid, uh, things like that. Former coach Jeremy Henshin says he got tired of it. So I went to the principal and he said there would be an investigation over it, and it came back unfounded through the superintendent, and it never made it to the school board. Past coaches tell me that because of Kavanaugh's coaching style, students have been quitting, leaving the team with barely enough players for a game. Each year it gets worse and worse, and we get less and less, and it's just to the point now where we could barely hold a roster. Kavanaugh was suspended back in 2013 for two games. He later resigned, but came back several years ago. In Georgetown, Courtney Bunting, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Now, we called Kavanaugh and sent him an email. We haven't heard back. Three people reached out to us anonymously saying Kavanaugh is being wrongly accused. Tonight, players are meeting in a show of unity against Coach Kavanaugh. And we reached out to Georgetown Ridge Farm Superintendent Jean Neal. She said they can't comment about this matter, but says they are committed to an educational environment that serves all of their youth, regardless of race. The former executive director of a Rantoul nursing home has been arrested. Police say she stole more than $20,000 from the facility. It happened at the Villas of Hollybrook. 44-year-old Kimberly Cross of Rantoul is charged with financial exploitation of an elderly person. Officers found that checks written to the villas had either been altered, cashed, or deposited into an account other than the business account. The Illinois Attorney General has filed a lawsuit against a plasma collection company. One of their locations is in Champaign. CSL Plasma is accused of discriminating against people with disabilities. The company is accused of denying service to someone with a service animal at its Rockford location. The suit also says it denied service to someone who's deaf, who wanted a sign language interpreter at its Montgomery location. The Champagne Business opened last August. CSL also has locations in Decatur, Normal, and Springfield. 
This is an update for you. We now know the name of a man who died in a crash in McLean County. It happened southeast of Colfax yesterday. 28-year-old Kalen Roberts of Gibson City died. The McLean County Sheriff's Office is investigating what happened. The U of I's campus won't be empty this upcoming semester. That's if the state moves into and stays in phase four. The U of I school system announced the plan today to bring students back for in-person learning, but not everything's going to look exactly the same. WCI3's Andy Olson live on campus for us. So Andy, what's going to be different for students? Jennifer, first of all, some classes are going to continue to be taught online. This is most likely going to be classes that are taught in large lecture rooms. But others that depend on lab and hands-on learning are going to uh, be brought back to the classroom with social distancing measures. Classrooms are going to be cleaned every day, and there will be mass testing. The school says they have a plan that could test 10,000 people a day, which means every student could be tested in just one week. As the university prepares, the vice provost says making each classroom safe for students is a big undertaking. The big challenge for us over the next several weeks is going to be kind of reconfiguring our class schedule from what a normal semester would be. With more than 5,000 different classes offered on our campus in a normal semester, to try to make good use of the space, make good use of the time. Some common areas are also going to be restricted come fall. The facility staff is back on campus preparing. They're moving and removing tables, chairs, and more to keep things socially distanced. Now, the university says that with this plan, they should be on schedule to start the fall semester on time in 10 weeks. Other universities around the country have already decided on a plan that will move everything to e-learning in the couple of weeks after Thanksgiving this semester. The university says that they have talked and considered that plan, but they have not made a decision yet. In Urbana, Andy Olson, WCIA3, your local news leader. Thank you, Andy. Dorms will also be impacted in the fall. Rooms will be capped to two people. Quarantine areas will be set up for students who test positive or those who show symptoms. And dining halls will mostly be pre-packaged food with limited sit-down options. Guidelines for how K-12 through schools should, should reopen could be coming soon. The State Board of Education met yesterday to set rules for districts, but the final result is taking a little bit longer than expected. One of the rules will be a mask requirement for students and staff and that had one board member concerned I'm just concerned about holding children to a standard a health standard that we're really not holding adults to currently uh, as it relates to um, you know public places now the rules were expected to be released today, but that's been delayed. Schools are officially allowed to reopen during Phase 4. All four regions of the state are scheduled to move out of Phase 3, June 26th. Free meals for kids will be handed out in Decatur. The Park District and School District extended the free lunch program through the summer. They'll be at the same locations as before. Eisenhower, MacArthur, Hope and Stephen Decatur on Tuesday and Friday from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And at French Stem, Muffley, South Shores and Parsons on Tuesday and Friday from 1030 to noon. Three days worth of meals will be handed out on Tuesday, two days handed out on Friday. For the second time in a week, the Supreme Court has ruled against the president. The local reaction to dreamers being allowed to stay in the country. Defending our freedom. Also tonight. After defending our freedom to allow someone to do something like this. Some veterans are mad tonight. What they fought for is now missing. And as we get you a recap of today, as we look at the roofing dog at Gibson Area Hospital camera, Gibson City with a few clouds out there. That high temperature made it up to 88 degrees, getting closer to that 90 degree mark. I think we hit it though, starting tomorrow as the 90s return area wide. A uh, closer look at the Father's Day weekend forecast and how isolated storms could impact any outdoor plans when we come back.